Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I provide an update on the case of Adnan Syed? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll start with the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Hei Min Lee was born in South Korea on October 15, 1980. She moved to the United States in 1992 along with her mother and brother. The family lived in Baltimore, Maryland. She attended Woodlawn High School and had a boyfriend there named Adnan Syed. The couple kept the relationship a secret due to cultural and religious differences. The relationship was not stable. Hei Min Lee eventually rejected Adnan. In December 1998, Hay started a new relationship. This upset Adnan. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On January 13, 1999, Hei Min Lee was reported missing after failing to pick up her cousin after school. She was last seen sometime around 2.30 p.m. Hay had never failed to come home after school, so her family and others were immediately worried. The police spoke to Adnan Syed during the course of their investigation. He told the police that Hay was in school on January 13 and was supposed to give him a ride home, but he was running late. He just assumed that she left after waiting for a few minutes. Heyman Lee's body was found in a park in Baltimore on February 9. Her cause of death was manual strangulation. Three days later, the police received an anonymous tip telling them to take a closer look at Adnan Syed. The police collected his cell phone records and discovered that he had called a person named Jay Wilds. When the police spoke to Jay, he claimed he didn't know anything, but then he changed his story a few times. Jay eventually said that he helped Adnan dispose of Hay's body in the park at 7 p.m. on the day she went missing. The police may have fed information to Jay and helped him to keep his story straight but it did not help him very much because his story was still convoluted. Jay led the police to Heyman Lee's 1998 Nissan Sentra on February 28, 1999. The car had been missing as well. This went a long way to convincing the police that Jay was involved. Adnan was arrested on the same day. He was charged with first-degree murder. Jay was charged with accessory after the fact. Adnan's first trial was declared a mistrial after the judge accused his attorney of lying. The jury wasn't supposed to hear that part. Adnan's second trial started in January 2000. On February 25, he was found guilty of first-degree murder, robbery, false imprisonment, and kidnapping. He was sentenced to life in prison plus 30 years. Jay Wilds was offered a plea deal and received probation. Adnan Syed filed multiple appeals over the next few years. They were all unsuccessful. In October 2021, the Juvenile Restoration Act took effect in the state of Maryland. This law states that anyone convicted of a crime, which they committed when they were under the age of 18, can apply for a sentence reduction if they have served at least 20 years in prison. Adnan sought relief under this law by filing a motion a prosecutor started going through the case file in order to respond to the motion and found handwritten notes that pointed to a potential alternate suspect. This started a chain of events which eventually led to the state filing a motion to vacate the judgment against Adnan, meaning to overturn his conviction. On September 19, 2022, the judge granted the motion and Adnan was released to home detention. The state said that they may try Adnan again for murder. They intend to continue investigating and see what happens. The state did not have a great case the first time when the memories of witnesses were fresh. Realistically, there's no way they're going to try Adnan again unless they discover some secret video or other amazing evidence like DNA. Now moving to my analysis. The overturned status of Adnan's conviction does not mean that he is truly not guilty in reality. And, as I mentioned, he could face another trial. There are people on both sides of this argument. 
Some people believe that he's guilty. Others believe that his conviction was unjust. As I analyze the evidence in this case, I have updated it with the disclosures made on the state's motion to vacate judgment. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Adnan Syed was guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. Adnan and Hay were in a contentious romantic relationship that was stressed by cultural and religious differences. Adnan viewed his relationship with Hay as being incongruent with his religious values. He viewed her as an obstacle to adhering to his faith. At one point, he referred to her as the devil. Hay indicated in her diary that Adnan was controlling, possessive, and unwilling to accept the fact that she rejected him. Hay complained to one of her teachers about Adnan. She told the teacher not to reveal her location because the couple had been fighting. Hay wrote a note to Adnan explaining that she was breaking up with him. He wrote the words, I'm going to kill, on that note. The police questioned Adnan about his activity on the day Heyman Lee went missing. He had unexplained memory loss. I guess the day that he found out his ex-girlfriend was missing just wasn't that memorable to him. Adnan regularly called Hay, but after she went missing, the calls stopped, as if he knew she was not going to answer her phone. Adnan loaned his car to Jay Wilds on January 13. He had never done that before. This is important because it gives Adnan a reason to ask Hay for a ride home from school, as if he was trying to create a scenario where he was alone with her. It also supports the idea that he was in a conspiracy with Jay Wilds. Jay knew where Hay's vehicle was parked. He led the police to it. How could he have known that if he was not involved in the murder? Moving to the exculpatory factors, Jay Wilds was a terrible witness. The state even admitted as much. Jay had numerous problems with law enforcement. He supplied three different versions of his story. It appears as though he received some coaching from the police, and he was offered a phenomenal plea deal. During Adnan's trial, the state explained to the jury that the members of the jury did not have to rely on Jay's testimony because cell phone data corroborated his story. The state argued that incoming calls could be used to determine the location of the phone. As it turns out, the process was not reliable. One of Adnan's classmates named Asia McLean said that she spoke to him at the library on January 13. If this is true, it certainly helps Adnan's case, but he still would have had time to commit the murder, so I'm not convinced this alibi witness really matters a lot. DNA testing revealed that his DNA was not on Heyman Lee's body or in her vehicle. The state's theory of the crime was that Adnan strangled Hay in her car. One would think that he would have left some DNA behind, and again, that her DNA would be on him. Adnan did not have any injuries on him consistent with a physical altercation, no bruises, no scratches, no marks of any type. So, again, this seems unusual based on the physical activity and violent nature of manual strangulation. He was somehow able to avoid injury. In the motion to vacate judgment filed in 2022, the state said that there were two other suspects which were known to investigators at the time of the initial investigation. They did not name the suspects. Heyman Lee's vehicle was found directly behind the house of a family member of one of those suspects. One of these suspects attacked a woman in her vehicle and was convicted in connection with that attack. One of the suspects had a history committing crimes related to sex. The state argued that one of the suspects was improperly cleared as a suspect, although this was based on polygraph nonsense. To me, this is like the police saying that Santa Claus provided the suspect an alibi by saying that he saw him hanging out with Bigfoot and the Easter Bunny on Atlantis. One of the detectives who investigated the case was involved in misconduct in another murder case. This led to a wrongful conviction and later an exoneration. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Adnan Syed was guilty of murder? I think that he was guilty in reality. His unexplained memory loss, writing the message about killing on the breakup note, and his lack of an alibi are just too powerful to ignore. As far as the legal standard, I do not think he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. 
it is certainly reasonable to believe that someone else could have murdered Heyman Lee. The original prosecutor in the case said that the testimony of Jay Wilds by itself would not have represented proof beyond a reasonable doubt. At this point, the state doesn't have much more than the testimony of Jay Wilds. Here are my thoughts on a few other areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, this is one of those cases that was probably destroyed by a poor investigation. I think that sometimes the police get it in their minds that because they believe they've arrested the right person, they don't have to investigate other suspects. They get lazy and focus completely on the primary suspect. This is tunnel vision, and it's a problem that we see in a number of cases. What they often do not realize is how this actually hurts their case. A thorough investigation would increase the chances of getting a conviction and defending that conviction against appeals. In their haste to assign blame to Adnan Syed, the police neglected to protect the case against him. Item number two, Jay Wilds was not a credible witness, but that doesn't mean that he was lying about Adnan being the killer. This is one of the problems with having criminals testify against defendants. They don't have any credibility. In this particular case, Jay simply could not keep his story straight, almost like he was fabricating a story. The prosecutors never actually had a timeline of the crime that matched Jay's description of events. Adnan's conviction was really based on the loose relationship between the cell phone data and Jay's story. The cell phone may have been at the park when Hay's body was placed there, but there's no way to know that based on the cell phone records. Now moving to the final item, number three. If Adnan Syed is not guilty, then his conviction and incarceration represent a terrible injustice. He sat in prison for years for something he didn't do. If Adnan is guilty, then his conviction being vacated is a terrible injustice. Heyman Lee's murder has gone unpunished. One of the greatest tests of the criminal justice system is its ability to accept the uncomfortable area between the constructs of guilty based on the balance of probability and not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Balance of probability means a greater than 50% chance that someone is guilty. According to research, reasonable doubt equals roughly 90% certainty for many people who serve on juries. It's not supposed to be thought of like that, but that is how it can be reduced in terms of mathematics. Therefore, the uncomfortable zone is roughly from 50 to 90 percent certainty of guilt. When an offender exists in this region, they are walking around on the street knowing that they were responsible for a crime, but also knowing that the state can't prove it. If Adnan exists in this dishonorable region of certainty, his conscience, if he has one, is the only jailer he will ever know. When someone who was actually guilty is set free, it's not a time for celebration rather a time to reflect on the failures which allowed that person to escape justice in the first place. That's my update on the case of Adnan Syed. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.